Hello everyone, welcome to the introduction of the module on cultural citizenship. This lecture is part of your paper on media, culture and society. This lecture will put forth the argument that the idea and concept of citizenship has been traditionally conceived in terms of territory, which is a socio-political socio construct emerging from specific historical conditions. This lecture questions the conventionally held theories of citizenship and its limitations to understand the recent developments. Besides, the module engages with the Eurocentric perspective of citizenship and engages in its implications in Indian society. Finally, the lecture raises issues with changing notions of citizenship with the advent of identity question, cultural flows, accelerated by globalization and explores the need for cultural citizenship. Now, while discussing about the concept of cultural citizenship, we come across that the idea of citizenship has been linked with the emergence of nation states with specific territorial boundaries. Hence, individuals living in those boundaries are seen as citizens having certain rights. Citizens are defined in terms of their relationship with the state and state promised a minimal standard of living for its citizens. Citizenship lie at the core of the modern nation states. In this sense, citizenship is their sense of the political order, in conflates the right to reside and move about within the national territory and the obligation to defend these very same rights. Citizens share their rights and the duty to defend the integrity of their territorial space on equal terms. Conceptually, the alien is the diametrical opposite of the citizen. Being an alien is to be devoid of both rights and obligations. By putting these two concepts, citizens and aliens, at opposite ends of a spectrum, one can generate a scale that defines individuals in countries around the world at different levels of citizenship or alienation. Cultural citizenship is a concept in which citizens are differentiated with non-citizens or aliens to a more nuanced concept that reflects the sociocultural factors that contribute in the making of citizenship. This way, it challenges the conventionally held theories of citizenship. The conceptual category of cultural citizenship opens up the space to challenge the unilinear understanding of charting the evolution of citizenship. It counts for specificities of sociocultural context. It considers citizenship as a dynamic concept rather than a fixed category. The indigenous elements of citizenship, which many a times appear deviant to the normative patterns, are significant, hence needs to be seriously considered. Subrat Mitra states that the cultural flow of citizenship has been accentuated by the process of colonization. In this way, the challenges to the fixed parameters of citizenship and nation state come from colonies or non-Europeans. Therefore, citizenship emerges as a conflated category of the imported foreign cultural flows that the embedded indigenous cultural elements. And now, in the age of globalization, a further acceleration in such cultural flows is taking place 
calling for re-evaluation of the concept of citizenship. Scholars have argued that the challenges and changes coming through globalization become imperative to reevaluate the meaning of citizenship today. No nation of the world today is an island and national citizenship is quickened by the global flow of the concepts of freedom, equity and empowerment. There are debates as to whether citizenship is declining or is in the process of acquiring new meanings appropriate for a global age. As we live in an information society, it requires a different engagement with the meaning and reconsideration of the questions of citizenship. As we know that the study of citizenship has also been redefined by new questions arising from the growing significance of the media and popular culture, new social movements, feminism, globalization and the erosion of the environment and multiculturalism. It is argued that citizenship cannot be defined now through conventional aspects of rights, obligation, duty, but through the question of culture as well. And the reason cited is that we are living in an informational and technological society which is the product of capitalism and its subsidiary apparatus of globalization. The accelerated pace of the global flow of ideas has been consequences for both the structure and agency of citizenship. New ideas of rights and entitlements have affected the way national states and international organizations view order governance, national and international laws of travel and residence. The global flow of ideas and new technologies of communication have also affected the perception of ordinary men and women in defining their political identity, belief, faith, worship, ritual and living space. Toby Miller argues that with the emergence of globalization, a crisis of belonging erupted. He writes, we are in a crisis of belonging a population crisis of who, what, when and where, more and more people feel as though they do not belong. More and more people are seeking to belong and more and more people are not counted as belonging. This crisis of belonging, according to Miller, has emerged with the apparent disappearance of sovereign state that has withdrawn from the welfare of the individuals under its project of neoliberalism. In its most basic form of globalization has also led to the withdrawal of the state, shifting its responsibilities from provider to regulator of public services. This is underpinned by neoliberal globalism that prioritizes economic growth and market logic. The erosion of the public sector has been one of the notable changes in the relationship between the individual and the state. Such fundamental changes in the relationship between the individual and the state mean in turn that the concept of citizenship is changing. Miller states that the neoliberal state governs more through culture than force, hence putting forth the notion of cultural citizenship in the neoliberal state. What he meant is that the state does not use the repressive apparatus to govern its citizens. The state governs through ideology. Embedded into commodified cultural forms, modern means of commercialization being the prominent. To quote Miller, cultural citizenship is concerned with the way this crisis is both registered and held in check in the United States through practices of government, consumption, risk and moral panic in popular culture, specifically television. 
with economic welfare disowned as a responsibility of the sovereign state and pushed onto individuals and communities governing at a distance is the norm. Traditional means of the state control via instruction or restraint have been added to by a project of neoliberalism which seeks to manage subjectivity through culture. Ironically, the very thing supposedly imperiled by threats of belonging. Miller also highlights that the intensification of neoliberal globalization through a global division of labor has brought the aspects of universal rights into picture taking citizenship out of the confines of sovereign state. Development of transnational spheres of governance, instantaneous news and global networks among new social movements has questioned the assumed connection between citizenship and the nation state. These processes undermine or at least call into question the correspondence that citizenship has traditionally drawn between belonging and the nation state. Additionally, scholars have pointed out that whereas globalization was supposed to make citizenship and national boundaries increasingly less salient, on the contrary, it has revived their importance. Ethnic conflicts and nationalism are the products of same globalization which was claimed to erode these. Subrat Mitra states, in the absence of a global political order with binding character, nation states acting in their capacity as the collective voice of their citizens remain the most important agents of accountability and an enforcement. Pointing to the plight of immigrants, Mitra argues the complex process through which subjects and immigrants become citizens thus speeches territoriality and ethnicity as competing norms for their entitlement to citizenship. Caught in this double bind, citizenship has become a contested category, an entangled and flexible relationship more than a fixed linkage with the potential to become a political problem of global as well as local importance. Mitra discusses the concept of flow which according to him connects the endogenous concept of citizenship in the national context with the exogenous influence transmitted through the institutions and processes of globalization. He says that charting the flow of citizenship is a complex problem. The everyday references to the flow of objects signify a movement from one place to another in a steady unbroken stream, a continuous mass in a manner that would be impersonally visible rather as one would think about the flow of blood in veins and arteries, of water flowing downstream of electricity moving across a conductive medium. However, can one attribute these characteristics to the flow of citizenship from one context to the other and how does the agency of individuals and groups affect the momentum to stop the flow or depending on the context accelerate it. As Mitra states, the visualization of citizenship as cultural flow opens up the space for approaching citizenship beyond the fixed structures of nation states. The results of this flow are visible in the hybridization of the global and the local. Through the interaction of imported with the indigenous categories, objects and concepts, a hybridization is taking place giving birth to new forms such flow is also characterized by a tension between the process of homogenization and differentiation. While discussing about the various discourses on citizenship in India, we come across that citizenship has emerged as a key issue in the contemporary politics of the world's largest democracy. In this respect, 
India is not very different from other changing societies, whether issues of identity, space and citizenship are at the very forefront of political debate. In the light of the worldwide resurgence of ethnicity, identity and rapidly expanding technologically advanced global communication have implicitly raised a fundamental question that is who is an Indian? which was till now kept in abeyance due to emphasis on modernization since 1947. Today, with the increasing demands of self-determination from various corners of the country, along with the upsurge of conservative ideologies, citizenship has emerged as significant site challenging the conventional wisdom. India offers magnificent opportunities to intervene in the discourse on citizenship through various parameters of cultural associations of citizenship, thereby challenging the European theories of citizenship that were inadequate to analyze the nature of citizenship in India. India resembles cultural and historical diversity that of Europe. It is argued that citizenship in Europe evolved from below. Whereas in Indian case, it was imposed and introduced from above, first by the colonial rule and then by the constitution. In Europe, the process of nation building was inspired by orthogenetic historical factors such as the industrial revolution, unlike the Indian case where it is prompted by heterogenetic influences motivated by colonialism. As Mitra writes, in India, by comparison, the game has been lopsided. With decolonization, the national state as the main agency for nation building, colonial subjects have been ca catapulted from feudal slumber to hyperactivity in a state waiting to be modern, democratic and secular. The imperative for action has come from above in the form of judicial empowerment and from below as a consequence of constitutional empowerment and franchisement and entitlement in the shape of struggle for living space, dignity, livelihood and equality. In contrast to Europe, in India the process of citizen making has thus been marked by a distinctive rhetoric and political culture where rights have taken priority over duties and express themselves in the imported European concept of citizenship. In this backdrop, there are three distinct but overlapping approaches delineated by Mitra to understand the nature of citizenship in India, which are evolution, involution and rational construction, from which the contemporary discourse on citizenship in India has evolved. Now, while discussing about, as we see, evolution and involution approaches conceptualize citizenship through indigenous categories, unlike the third, that is the rational construction, which relies on construction of citizenship through constitution. The term citizenship in India, as Mitra talks about, is a hybrid, hybrid product signifying the conflation of the conceptual and cultural flow from Europe during colonial rule, the ideas of Indian nationalists like Nehru, Gandhi, Ambedkar, Tagore, Savarkar, Bose, and indigenous moral and political categories. According to evolutionists, citizenship has been an essential part of the Indian civilization and heritage connecting India's past and present. In the evolutionist discourse, citizenship is equated with geographical territory of India. This approach conceptualizes citizenship in terms of a seamless flow from past to present, thereby relying essentially on the continuous existence of a nation called Bharat, taking inspiration from Hindu mythology. Contrary to this approach, involution looks for the source of citizenship in the diversity of cultures rather than territory and accounts for citizenship in terms of the moral communities. 
The involution approach postulates that entanglement of the indigenous moral communities and the imported concepts of cultural, economic and political rights is a more appropriate description of the state of citizenship in India. Hindutva, Khalsa, Naga, Mijo, Kashmiri are the examples of involution. According to Mitra, where the search for citizenship moves inwards into the deeper recesses of the collective self beyond the mere rituals of food, dress or social networks or articles on individual rights enshrined in the constitution. Straddling both these discourses on citizenship in India is the rational construction approach that concentrates on constitution of India as the cornerstone defining citizenship. Mitra argues that rational construction is about the strategy of citizen making in the vision that underpinned the effects of the constitution of India adopted in 1950 and still largely intact to transform a heterogeneous population into the new hybrid category of the Nagarik citizens of the Indian Republic. Constitution changed the status of entire population residing within the boundary of newly formed nation to citizens of the new republic. These three approaches are not exclusive but overlapping with differences in emphasis. Nehru typifies the rational construction through his commitment to the notion of liberal citizenship, but his ideas also draw legitimacy from the evolutionary approach that relies on the continuity of Indian civilization. Gandhi stood in opposition to Nehruvian idea of citizenship by emphasizing on communitarianism and dissolution of the state which is the prime promoter and protector of political rights of citizens in liberal framework. Ambedkar's vision of citizenship is shaped by his commitment to political equality to marginalize sections. Ambedkar reflects the elements of rational construction of citizenship but at the same time he also draws from the involution approach where the rights and identity of Dalits and backward sections figures prominently. The genealogy of citizenship in India has its roots in the colonial rule and anti-colonial struggles. For Nehru, citizenship was the foundation of Indian nation-state. The makers of the constitution debated various articles and clauses related to citizenship intensely. The constitution registered universal principles as the basis for citizenship. Mitra raises a question if these universal principles have any basis in India's past. He turns to historical and cultural roots of citizenship in India to find the answer to this question. He argues that there is a plurality in Indian political thinking. The ideas of nationalist leaders exemplify that plurality which was then trickled down through the constituent assembly debates. The constitution of India was deeply affected by the colonial and anti-colonial discourses categories under three approaches by Mitra. The direct contributions of the constitution are to be seen in the conflation of the republican, liber liberal and communitarian traditions of citizenship in the preamble, the articulation of rights and duties of citizenship in key sections of the constitution. The interplay of individual and group rights and finally the specifications of cultural and eth ethnic area within which citizenship is expected to flourish. A further layer of complexity is introduced to the cultural associations of citizenship in 1980s in India when liberalizes its economy under the structural adjustment program. 
This phase of globalization changed the discourse of citizenship as the state is not anymore seen and defined as the protector of the rights of citizen. As we have already argued that globalization alters the role of the state, which implies that the concept of citizenship changes as well. In India, globalization changed the nature of state responsibilities, thereby the changing the concept of citizenship. Due to the reduced state involvement in social services, market and consumerism acquired prominence in defining the notion of citizenship. The consumer citizenship model redefined the boundaries and meanings of democratic citizenship in ways that intensified the social inequalities. This is due to the political practices of the consumerist class that concentrated on limiting the participatory potential of subordinated social groups. Interestingly, this design of politics does not stand in opposition to democracy, but it reclaims and redefine the terms of democracy itself through the principles of exclusion. Liberalizing middle class has successfully reconstituted the boundaries of citizenship and national identity in ways that make certain forms of exclusion intrinsic to the workings of democracy. In other words, middle class conceptions of citizenship and democracy are defined and enacted through the politics of distinction and exclusion. You have learned that citizenship is not a fixed, legal and constitutional defined entity, but a dynamic category affected by the cultural interactions at various levels. The process of colonization and globalization have shaped and reshaped the cultural elements of citizenship historically. Such engagement with the question of citizenship breaks away with the conventional wisdom and promulgates a more contemporary and complex understanding of citizenship. For more details, please read the e-text of this lecture properly and attempt the questions in the end. Thank you.